talking about front brake shutter in your Suzuki or any car really they're all the same the easiest way to diagnose front brake shutter is if you hit the brakes at a higher sort of speed and uh, your steering wheel shakes carries on and you can also feel it through the brake pedal too nine times out of ten if your steering wheel is shuddering under braking it will be brake shutter uh, but there is a slight chance you could have an issue with your drive line or other steering components as well so it's always worth to check that front brake shutter is caused by uh, rapid cooling of your disc brakes so for example in my instance I run 31s on my Jimny uh, the brakes do get hot especially off-road trying to slow the big tires down then as soon as you hit a puddle or water crossing or anything and the discs and the metal in the discs rapid cools uh, they will warp um, it gives you that shutter because they're not running true anymore now I've taken a little video here this is what uh, brake shutter looks like today I'll only be machining my brake rotors but while I'm in there I'll show you guys how to replace your brakes from scratch as well I'll disassemble the whole lot and reassemble it as if we're changing everything and just once again like with all these videos if you're not confident with doing brakes don't attempt it give it to your mechanic um, but yeah first of all we want to pull the front wheels off all right and so now that your wheels off you want to take your brake caliper off which is this part here now there's two bolts holding that on there's one here and one there so we'll take those two bolts off get the caliper off first just a little fyi they are a 12 mil Those two bolts are off. Now your caliper should just slide off like that. Now you can pull your brake pads out. Two brake pads, plenty of meat left. So now you can pull your cradle off, which is this bit here. It's also got two bolts behind it, that one and that one. And these are a 17 mil. Two bolts there and they do have both have a washer on them so don't lose those now you can lift your cradle off just like that all right once you've gotten that far you probably realize that this rotor is stuck to your hub just because of all the buildup of dirt and rust there's a little m8 hole here and one right there they're an m8 by 1.25 it's actually exactly the same thread as that bolt you pulled out of the caliper so you can use that but I don't want to damage mine so I've just got a cruddy old bolt from the shed so you just thread it in there tighten it up and when you tighten that up it will pull the rotor off its seal.
And that's it. It's fallen off. And you can pull that straight off and you can see what I mean in the back there. That's that bolt that I just threaded in. So that pushes the rotor off the hub. One of the things to do before reassembly is to lube up your brake slides. So in here, you've got a couple of metal tubes on both sides. If you press them out, just with your hand, if you can, if they're not stuck. So there are your brake slides. So they need to be lubricated on the outside of the metal tube. I've cleaned it up with a bit of emery paper just to get the big gunky stuff off. Now you want to coat the outside of this with brake lubricant. Uh, I've just bought this stuff. You can use any brake lube, whatever your preference is. So just coat the outside of it. Be as generous as you want with the lube. Now these rubber grommets might come out on you. You don't have to pull them out, but they'll probably come out when you pull the slide out. You just press them back in just like that. And then you push your slide in. Just like that. Just make sure it slides nice and freely in your rubber grommets there and in your caliper. And do that side as well. Now, if you don't lube these up, they will seize in here and your brake pads will start wearing unevenly. If you're reusing your old brake pads, like I am, uh, you'll notice it's got a very smooth finish. Now you want to try and roughen that up before you put it back on. If you've got a belt sander or emery paper, that'll work. But what I usually do is uh, just do a figure of eight on a rough concrete patch with the brake pads. Try and get them to rough up a little bit. And that's the finish you'll get on it. If the camera picks it up, nice rough surface and not a smooth one. All right, just got my rotors back. So now, before you throw them on, you want to clean up all the mating surfaces um, where your rotor is going to touch your hub, just to get all the old rust and dirt off. Clean the surface of your hub as well as your rotor, just with some emery paper. When your rotor gets machined, it will leave tiny, tiny little bits of metal flake that you probably can't even see with your eye, but they're there. Um, you do need to wash that off just with a hose or some brake cleaner and a rag before you reassemble. Because if you don't do that, um, all those little metal flakes will embed into your brake pads uh, as soon as you hit the brakes the first time and they'll squeal forever. Now it's time to reassemble. Uh, you can start by chucking your brake rotor on. Chuck your cradle on with 17 mil bolts. When I do brake work, I always just put a dot of uh, thread locker on there as well. Don't have to go crazy with it. Now torque your bolts up to spec. I know what the torque spec is for my car, you are probably better off just double checking in your own repair manual because they're all a little bit different sometimes. Now chuck your pads in. Uh, I've got a little bit of anti-squeal here that I put on my brake pads. You want to put the anti-squeal where the brake pad touches the caliper.
just like that. Do your other side, same thing. Now you can put your caliper on, because I'm only machining the rotors today and reusing the old brake pads. I uh, won't be pushing the piston back. That's simple enough to do. Bit locked tight again on these bolts. You will have to bed the new brake pads in. I'll show you at the end of the video how to do that. And that's it for assembly. All right, now we're all back together. Now we can bed the brakes in. Now, before you do anything, because you've done a brake job, your brake pads won't be sitting on the rotor all the way. So what you've got to do is you've got to pump the brake pedal until the brake pedal's hard before you move. Otherwise, you'll back out of your driveway and you'll be wondering why you're not stopping. Now, once your brake pedal's pumped up, back out of the driveway, give your brakes a little test. When you do brakes, the brake pedal will initially feel pretty spongy until, the, until they're bedded in. So before you bed your brakes in, you don't want to do any hard braking or avoid it. Obviously, if it's an emergency, but try and avoid hard braking. So drive up, your, up the road a little bit, get to about 20 k's an hour, and slowly apply your brakes. Make sure you're on a quiet road, obviously. Now get up to about 40, and do the same thing. Slowly apply the brakes till you come to nearly a stop. Now do the same thing with 60, then go 80, and go 100 if you want. And then once, once the brakes are bedded in properly, your brake pedal should feel really nice. Come to a slow stop. And that's it guys, pretty straightforward. Um, it obviously is a very important component on your car, so just make sure you watch what you're doing. And thanks for watching.